So in this segment, we're going to be talking about um, a former MSP telling Douglas Ross to ditch Johnson or face terminal decline. Former MSP accuses Douglas Ross of risible party gate defence, which the word risible, which I've never heard of, means provoking laughter through uh, through being ridiculous, which we did cover Douglas Ross's um, kind of defence of Johnson, despite calling for Johnson to resign. Um, it's comical, honestly. It's so, so funny. Um, I just, th- this guy is, he's a lightweight, you know, Reese Mogg is right. This man, this man is a lightweight politician what more can you say about him but the Scottish Conservatives are in terminal decline and are destined for third place in council elections because of Douglas Ross's risible defence of Johnson according to a former MSP they're not doing too great and the Scottish MSPs really position themselves as saying well the SNP and the Labour Party are basically the same apart from their ideas on unionism if you want to vote for someone different for someone to hold Nicola Sturgeon accountable vote Tory Ruth Davidson who is a person I don't really like because of her political leanings did a very good job of making the Scottish Tories relevant but she uh, resigned I think in 2019 or 2020 um, and Douglas Ross is um, you know a guy looks like a gust of wind could knock him over so, uh, Adam Tompkins, who was a Conservative MSP for Glasgow in the last Parliament, said the Prime Minister was a fool and a clown and must resign. You know, it kind of reminds me of uh, Andy Tate. You are nothing, you're a fool, and you're a waste of time. Good night. I can't do a manc accent. Monkey can, monkey tron. Tompkins, who has returned to academia as a law professor, said the resignation of Lord Wolfson as Justice Minister last week in protest at Johnson's fine for breaking COVID rules illustrates Johnson's disregard from the law for the law. And what this kind of professor, a former MSP, paints is a picture of Johnson's law-breaking tendencies or disregard for the law. Dude thinks his judge dread. In his resignation letter, Wolfson said it would be inconsistent with the rule of law that conduct um, that conduct to pass with constitutional impunity. So essentially saying that Boris Johnson broke the law, he should go. Um, you know, he's not above the law, really. Tomkins also cited the resignation of Lord Keane, an advocate general for Scottish for Scotland in September 2020, after the emergence of legislation which admitted a minister's admitted could break international law. So I think it's like I can't remember the name of it. Is the Internal Market Bill? I think it was, and. Um, yeah, you know, Lord Keane resigned over it. I think, I don't know if I covered it. You know, you got Brandon Lewis arguing we're doing it in a limited and specific way, which is a really funny, really funny, but really stupid argument. Really dumb. Sir Jonathan Jones, Sir John, John Jones, QC resigned in 2020 as head of government legal services over the same matter. So you can see, you know, the House of Lords and some of these civil servants have so much more... Um, kind of honour to resign over stuff than you know, government ministers do. It's just crazy. Manira uh, Mirza, someone we covered, at the time one of Johnson's longest serving advisors uh, resigned after Johnson tried to say that Starmer had failed to um, prosecute Jimmy Savile, which we know is not the case. Um, that was a vicious, vicious slur by um, a crappy prime minister and also shared by uh, certain cabinet ministers who really should have known better. Writing in the Herald, Tompkins said, What binds each of these resignations together is the old idea of the rule of law that the government must act compatibly with and not contrary to the law. And had Boris Johnson said some of these statements in public, especially the the Savile stuff, you know, Keir Starmer would have been in his right to sue him for defamation. When a government asserts that the laws do not apply to it, that assertion offends not only the law itself, but our idea of a constitutional government. It kind of, it, it kind of destroys the not just the constitutional government but kind of the idea that you know there was the the idea that the king would also be held liable under the law so should any politician no no one is above the law in this country that's the whole point of it and if anyone is then the system is broken the fact that boris johnson got a 50 quid fine is a joke in the first place to be honest and the fact that it took so long for the met police to do anything is also comical i think they were sued into actually doing the right thing by the good law project he said the Scottish Conservatives were in the sorry position of defending a fool and a clown who must be shown the door. He added Douglas Ross and his forlorn troops have now reduced themselves and made their former position of principle look not only but also you know laughable, which is true that you know Douglas Ross, you know, to some credit to him, took a very strong stance that if Boris Johnson, you know, if parties happened essentially, Boris Johnson should resign. We know that they did. 
and now he's gone back to the Tory talking point of, oh, well, you see, um, because there's a war in Ukraine and there's a Russian invasion, we can't get rid of the Prime Minister of the day. Like, no, we've had Prime Ministers change during wars. It's a joke. Um, by insisting that the Prime Minister is now somehow fit for office and that being fined by the police makes no difference. He also won't answer questions about will he back Johnson in the next election or will he call for Johnson's resignation after the war in Ukraine ends, which are decent follow-up questions, but the fact remains the dude's a lightweight. All um, Anna Sawar, the Scottish Labour leader, has to do from here is to sit and sit still and watch a Scottish Labour overtakes the Tories at Scotland's second party and the principal opposition force to the SNP because th- realistically there's not a ton of I don't think there'll be a, th- a ton of difference on policies between the SNP and Scottish Labour apart apart from unionism and um, a, a kind of independence Scottish independence they would be the key kind of two differing factors the Scottish Conservatives are in terminal decline again you know Ruth Davidson did bail them out but again you know it's happening again this and this time it's their own fault which is true it is the fault of Douglas Ross and also the Tory party in general. Fraser accused Nicola Sturgeon, the SNP leader, of twisted logic. I mean, this is this is pure comedy. By condemning Johnson when she apologised several times for meeting uh, the public without wearing a mask, including a shop, visit to a barber shop at the weekend, she walked in, forgot her mask, so I think someone must have told her, or she must have remembered she has to wear a mask, and she put it on. There was no scandal. She didn't, um, it seems more like an accident than anything. It's far different than organising uh, leaving drinks for one of your advisors, isn't it? That's premeditated. One's an accident, and excusable. The other one's premeditated. Uh, hopefully Sturgeon remembers the rules in future, but... Um, yeah, if you, uh, for me, like if you walked into a shop and you didn't have a mask on, if someone at the shop said, uh, "Can you wear a mask, please?" or something like that, and you put it on, there's no offence there, really. Writing in the Scotsman, he said, "This is the pitch from a woman from Irvine. I don't know what that is, who repeatedly has been seen breaking the code rules that she set for Scotland. The latest being only the only last weekend. I mean, hers are a, misdeme- a misdemeanor, though." Johnson's is more a felony, really, when you think about it. Organising, leading, leaving drinks, having parties, etc. His staff doing karaoke. It's just madness. But in her case, Police Scotland decided not to investigate further for some reason because it's a minor offence and just told her off uh, on the day the rules cease to apply, which is fine. Hers was a minor one, like no one was impacted by it. Johnson's one was effectively a super spreader event. Um, especially with the karaoke, even though I don't think he, I don't know if he was there. We'll have to wait for the pictures. But indoor gatherings like that are super spreader events. Ian Blackford, the SNP leader, called on Tory MPs to finally accept the responsibility to restore public trust by removing the Prime Minister from office, or they will be made to pay made to own this and pay a very high price at the next election. He said on the fifth of May in Scotland. Uh, on the 5th of May, people in Scotland can send a message to Johnson and prioritise action to tackle the cost of living by voting SNP in the local elections, which is fine. I don't think the uh, Tories will care much if they get routed in the Scottish elections because I doubt the uh, CCHQ Conservative um, Central Headquarters really cares. But in fairness, where's the article gone? Brexit hardman Steve Baker has called for Boris Johnson to, to resign and once you've been called out by Brexit hardband Steve Baker it's game over innit you don't mess with him look at this man absolute unit look at him but yeah what more can you say apart from the fact that it's evident that the Scottish uh, uh, former Scot- uh, sorry Scottish former Conservative MSPs are very worried about their party in Scotland and I think they need to do a lot more to bring Douglas Ross into line because he's going to face a real uh, challenge in the uh, local elections and whenever I think whenever the next Scottish elections are, which I think are a while away because they had them recently, I think the SNP got the won the most seats and they teamed up with the Greens and are going to try and pass some sort of referendum on independence. So we'll have to keep an eye out on that when that happens. But during the local elections, I think um, the Conservatives are in real trouble here in Scotland and also in England and maybe Wales. But um, anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.